In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at how you can complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology NAS running DiStation Manager 7. While it's very tempting to dive straight in and start to configure your new NAS, it may be more beneficial to take a step back and check a few basic settings regarding your home network first. Not only should this help to avoid potential problems or issues as you set up your new NAS, if you're planning to make your NAS accessible through the internet, it may also help to keep it secure. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what we think you should be checking before you connect your NAS to your home network. As the configuration for a typical home network will probably be made up of hardware that was provided by your internet service provider, more than likely your home network will either consist of a modem and a wireless router, or some sort of all-in-one internet hub that acts as a modem, network switch, and wireless access point. As it's our intention to make this series for non-technical home users, we will be using what we consider to be typical home networking hardware. So our network will simply consist of an ADSL modem that links us to the internet, and a wireless router that is acting as the infrastructure for our home network. This means that we will be configuring and using our NAS primarily with Wi-Fi rather than an Ethernet connection. So while wireless technology is not as reliable or as fast as using Ethernet cables, for most home users, using Wi-Fi with their Synology NAS should work perfectly fine. It's quite surprising how many internet service providers actually force their customers to only use the hardware that they provide so you would expect your ISP to avoid using cheap, poor quality hardware. Unfortunately, as this is often not the case, and it's not unknown for customers to be left trying to use hardware that provides poor internet speeds, or wireless networks that do not cover the whole of their home, as your router will be the heart of your home network, connecting a NAS to something that is giving you poor internet speeds, or slow wireless access, will have adverse effects on the performance of your new NAS. So our first recommendation is to check that your broadband speeds match what your internet service provider says that you should be getting. This will be particularly important if you plan to make your NAS accessible via the internet. While there are a number of different ways to test the speed of your internet connection, one of the easiest is to use an app like Speedtest by Ookla. As internet service providers tend to focus on download speeds rather than upload speeds, if you intend to access your NAS remotely from the internet, it will be your upload speeds that are more important. So to give you some sort of baseline, as you can see here, both our upload and download speeds are well below the UK national average. However, we found that these internet speeds are fine when used with our NAS for basic tasks like VPN, audio streaming and file sharing. It's also worth noting that these are roughly the speeds that our internet service provider states that we should be receiving in our area. So if you find that you're not getting the download and upload speeds that you think you should be getting, it's worth contacting your internet service provider and have them test your internet connection. Unfortunately, Wi-Fi and internet speeds are often used interchangeably. So while your internet speeds may be good, if your wireless coverage is poor, it can seem like you have a slow internet connection. However, as wireless technology can be complicated and your internet service provider may not see poor Wi-Fi coverage from their hardware as being their problem, you may have purchased your own wireless router and connected it to the router that your ISP issued you with. While this configuration will work for basic internet access, more than likely your setup will create something called double NAT which when setting up a new NAS could prevent it from being remotely accessible through the internet. In very simplistic terms, due to the way a router works, each router will have created its own isolated network, which in turn will have created two individual firewalls. So while you will be able to connect your NAS to either one of your routers, your NAS might experience problems navigating through the two networks that are sharing your internet connection. While double NAT is a topic for a future video, as there are multiple ways that it can be fixed, it is our opinion that the best option is to avoid double NAT in the first place. Not only will this mean that you have one less problem to solve later, it will also make troubleshooting that bit easier. So if you do have double NAT on your home network, before trying to configure your NAS, 
it may be worth contacting your internet service provider as they may be able to help you remove double NAT from your home network. As we mentioned earlier, your router is the heart of your home network. However, it's also a gateway to the internet. This means that as far as possible, you need to ensure that your home network is as secure as you can make it. However, when we use the term secure, we're speaking relatively, as nothing connected to the internet is truly secure. Instead, what we're looking to do is add layers of security to our home network that will either deter or prevent unauthorized access to our data. So while it may seem like a good idea to have your router remotely manageable through the internet, this will be another point of entry that has the potential to be exploited. It is for this reason that we recommend that, if possible, you disable the ability to remotely access and configure your router. If this is not possible, either because it violates your ISP's terms of service, or your router can only be configured through an app, as a minimum, you need to make sure that your router settings are not accessible via the manufacturer's default administrator's credentials. So we recommend that you change your router's administrator's password so that it is at least 10 characters in length, uses a combination of upper and lowercase letters, includes at least one number, and maybe a non-letter character. Also, if your router supports the function, now would be a good time to consider enabling something called two-factor authentication. While not all routers will support this function, two-factor authentication simply asks for two different forms of authentication in order for someone to be able to access the administrator's page on your router. As we've already mentioned, your router is your gateway to the internet, so you need to make sure that your gateway is protected with a firewall. While your router should by default already have its firewall enabled, before you connect and set up your NAS, it would be a good idea to run a test on your firewall to check that it's working correctly. The easiest way to do this is to use a web service called Shields Up. So if we open a web browser and in the address bar type grc.com, when we press enter, we will be taken to the Gibson Research Corporation homepage. Let's select Shields Up. Now from the homepage, we need to locate and select the Shields Up service. After selecting Proceed, we're presented with a number of different firewall tests. As we only want to do a basic test, we're going to simply choose the option All Service Ports. The All Service Port test will now check the first 1056 ports on our firewall as they are the most commonly used ports. While this is not a comprehensive test of all of the ports on our router's firewall, for now, this test should provide us with a good indication as to the general state of our firewall. At the end of the test, we will be presented with a report indicating if our firewall passed or failed. While more than likely your firewall will have passed its firewall test, a fail is not necessarily an indication that your firewall is not working properly. Basically, Shields Up will identify three states, open, closed and stealth. However, when Shields Up was first created, most home users did not understand what the purpose of a firewall was for, so security experts explained firewalls in very binary terms, with open bad and stealth good. Unfortunately, this level of understanding, while fine for home users, who only connect to the internet to pick up emails and browse the internet, is not particularly helpful for anyone looking to set up a NAS on their home network. This is because, in order for certain services on a NAS to work, it may be necessary for a specific port or ports to be open. Which means that should your firewall fail a Shields Up test, it is not necessarily an indication that your firewall is not working. Instead, from a security standpoint, if Shields Up reports that a port is open on your firewall, as long as you are aware that that port is open, you understand what that port is being used for, you know where that port is sending traffic to, and you know that the device receiving data on that port is properly secure, your home network and firewall should be secure enough for your new NAS. More than likely, as soon as you set up your wireless network, you basically forgot about it. That's because most routers tend to just work, only requiring a reboot every now and again. However, when you set up your new NAS, 
there will be a number of elements relating to your home network that you will need to adjust. So now would be a good time to check that you can access those specific settings on your router. While not an essential feature, running your own DNS server does make navigating to elements in your home network a lot easier, as rather than having to use an IP address to connect to your NAS or router, you can use its hostname. So the first setting on our router that we need to check that we can change is our router's DNS server settings. You might also find it beneficial to try an alternative DNS server address to the one that was provided by your internet service provider. This is because connecting to a fast DNS server can improve internet browsing speeds for the devices on your home network. So it might be worth trying either Google's or OpenDNS's primary DNS server address in your router's DNS settings. When you first set up your new NAS, you'll need to assign it with something called a static IP address. While we will be covering this topic in full in a future video, for now we just need to make sure that our router has the ability to change something called its DHCP settings. However, as not all routers will allow you to change your DHCP settings, alternatively you need to see if your router has a feature called IP reservation. As long as your router has either of these two options, you should be okay to set up your new NAS. The next setting that we need to check is if our router has something called UPnP or Universal Plug and Play. UPnP basically allows any devices connected to our home network to automatically open ports on our firewall and allow specific data to flow in or out of our network. While this means that we do not have to worry about firewall settings in order to get devices like smart speakers and games consoles connected to the internet, because UPnP works on a principle of trust, we need to trust that all of the devices connected to our network have not been compromised. This is because if a device has been compromised, its UPnP service could then be used by a hacker who could then take control of our firewall. So the general advice regarding UPnP is to switch it off. However, as setting up a NAS is quite a daunting project with a very steep learning curve, turning off UPnP at this stage may cause devices on your home network to stop working properly. So rather than face the prospect of having to learn about your router's firewall, for now we're going to recommend that you leave UPnP switched on. Another setting that we need to check on our router is if we have access to something called port forwarding. Basically port forwarding will allow us to redirect specific types of traffic through our router's firewall and direct it to our NAS. As you may have guessed, port forwarding is what we will have to use if we disable UPnP on our router or if the type of UPnP supported by our router is not compatible with our NAS. At this stage, don't worry too much about trying to understand DHCP, UPnP, firewalls and port forwarding. Instead, simply make sure you have access to these features on your router and that you have the ability to make changes to these settings in the future. It's very important for security reasons that you keep your wireless router up to date with the latest firmware and security patches. So we recommend that you regularly check your router for updates. However, if your router is five or more years old and no longer receives firmware and security patches before setting up your new NAS, you need to consider replacing your router. If your router was provided by your internet service provider, it might be worth contacting them and asking them for a replacement. If they refuse, and you find that you have to buy yourself a new wireless router, when setting up your new router, don't forget to avoid double NAT. For a while now, security experts have been recommending that we isolate devices on our home network that are considered to be part of the Internet of Things. The reason for this advice is that smart devices may be more susceptible to attack, particularly if the manufacturer is not regularly updating their products with security patches and fixes. So as best practice for our home network and the security of our new NAS, we should be looking to isolate the smart devices connected to our network. While there are a number of ways to do this, not all wireless routers have the same level of functionality. So we're going to suggest the simplest solution that we can think of, which is to enable guest Wi-Fi and then move all Internet of Things devices over to our guest network. So to summarize, in this video, we discussed a number of things that you need to check on your home network before you start to configure your new Synology NAS. 
we first recommend that you test the speed of your internet connection and check to see if your home network has been configured with double NAT. You also need to check to make sure that your router is not using its default login credentials and is up to date with the latest security and firmware patches. Then if you're not familiar with the settings in your router, make sure that you can access DNS, DHCP, IP reservations, your firewall and your router's port forward settings. Finally, for security reasons, we recommend that you move any Internet of Things devices to a separate network that is isolated from your new NAS and your other computers. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at the storage options for your NAS and try and explain how something called RAID will affect the storage capacity of your new NAS.